Okay, so this is, like I said, this is just inside zone. Let's get into some of the tags. Here's an action. Okay, so normal inside zone, we line up on the weak side and, or on the, uh, away from the call side and he comes across. This is an action to where anytime we tag action on our, uh, at the end of a play, it changes what the running back does. So he's now lined up on the play side. He's going to shuffle in the exact same way and then exit towards his landmark. Okay, so there's a lot going on in this play. So this is one of our scheme adjustments that we have. If a heavy shade is play side and they have shown to send him to the weak side, we will make what we call uno, an uno call. An uno call is a center, backside guard, backside tackle combination. So it's a three-man zone, which I like to stay away from, but it's those three, four, the shade, three, and Will Backer. Okay, it's for the old school field fire zone teams where you're going to get a heavy shade and you know he's crossing. One of the answers that defenses approach us with a lot is we get the nose tackle just stunt, okay, twist to take away some of our zone game. Say that again. It depends on what the tag is. So it's short, is he right action? That means that backside uh, tight end is accounting for the. C, defensive end or C-gap defender. Now he's going to sift through because we, again, had this in the game plan that we were going to do that. But these, the center, backside guard, backside tackle, know that they're accounting for these three. So that's why 72 wheels back, 78 wheels back as well. The center does a heck of a job. Step and play side. I don't love the two-hand feed across, but I, I'm good with him being a presence, keeping his shoulder square and climbing up to the Willie backer. Any of our combos, so this double um, is exactly the same as what a B would be in teaching. It's going to be, I'm stepping to get my hat play side, I'm going to slight bucket, second step in the ground, on third step I'm climbing if there's nothing in my gap. I teach eyes, so this guard doesn't have anybody in his gap. He's taking a step, his eyes are on the hip of the down line. But this also shows that action, just to give the defense a different look. Wayne State was showing they would roll the safety based off of the backers, the back's alignment. And so when we got a beat on that, we decided that week we were going to do some action things. And it worked out well for us. This is, so we can tag H run. H is just our movement guy. Um, personnel is how we do personnel. That's a whole different co conversation. But H run just means our H, our movement guy, is going across. It doesn't affect anything schematically. I will say that with a caveat of we, are, we aren't just sending guys willy-nilly across because it can affect the combinations. We didn't get into many situations this year where we had to spot ID things to where I'm singling and it's, I don't know exactly who it's going to. And for you got line guys, probably have an idea of what I'm talking about. So if, if they would do a drastic change within their linebacker's alignment, we would not H-run it. If they reacted with safeties, <clears throat> or we felt there was an advantage to us, or just to get their eyes moving somewhere else, we would do the H-run. So right here, nothing's changing for us. Still base, single, B, he's winning the backside defensive end. And really, if Al just keeps this on his path, he's in pretty good position which he finds his way back there as well. Okay, so extra. Extra, like I said, is our split flow. It has nothing to do with formation. This is, you know, right strong. Um, we weren't a big pro team, but this is at the end of a game, and we're just trying to get out of there, stay healthy, and move. Yes, sir. Okay, so our number one formation is trips with like a um, tight end to the right, three receivers, him off the ball. So it's the normal alignment as he would be a tight end off the ball. Anytime we motion him into the core, he's, he's supposed to, his crotch should split the guard's outside foot. And that gave us position on whether we're running power, 
Whether we're running counter, whether we're running split flow, it gave us the most flexibility to be consistent in his alignment and still execute all the blocks that we wanted him to. It's all based on formation. So if we called Ricky, he would be in this alignment off the ball. That's where we line him up. And that's our number one formation. Ricky wide where he's off the ball. Uh, but anytime we motioned him in the core, um, he would be in that alignment where he's, his crotch is splitting the outside leg of the guard. Um, you, there are some flexibilities based on our motions and what the play is. So if we're sprinting out and we want to motion him over here, we want him to gain leverage on a defensive end, so he's going to be a little bit wider. So it's, there's rules, but again, by play, things can change a little bit. But this is just split flow. We're working into the line of scrimmage from the H-back, trying to get our hat inside. And that's as plainly as we teach it. Again, this is our second group, so he doesn't do a really good job. Got to work with him a little bit. Here's another Uno up front. Center, backside guard, backside tackle. We've got a double on the front side and the split flow. Let's see if you can see it a little bit better. So there's his, his alignment. This is our number one formation. This is what we play out of every team in our conference. Uh, yard off the ball. Like to see Joe here, number 45, work into the line of scrimmage, be under control with that contact. So here's a movement on the front side. So although he's a base block, which means he's alone, if he gets a defensive end, this right tackle gets a defensive end that spikes inside, I've been both sides of things where I say, you have to win that and you can't leave that, period. But what I've gone to is, if we keep the line of scrimmage clean, our back has a chance. And I don't know if it's because he's special or if that's just the way football is now, is it not less Oklahoma drill and more keeping guys accounted for and continue to run your feet? So when you get a defensive end spiking inside, that tackle will two-hand commit and hand him to the guard, okay? Which t it's, it's almost sacrilege when you talk about offensive line play and I want to come off the ball and be physical. Well, yeah, I want to, no question, but we also have to keep – the line of scrimmage clean so he has a chance. So when this defensive end spikes inside, he's going to feed that inside. Don't like how he's a little out of control, but we were able to pick that up and Al can squeak through there. Um, I think he can make it easier on himself by going just inside of 66, but, you know, continue to work. <laughs> 